Okay, so welcome to the second part on how to write a head CT. Uh, first part is on excluding hemorrhage. Kind of the second part of my search pattern is uh, trying to exclude infarct or ischemic stroke. So how do I do that? So basically the first thing I do is I take the image of the brain. This is an axial CT, non-contrast, 2.5 millimeter slice thickness. I kind of zoom out up quite a bit. And then also what I do is I'll change the window to kind of a narrow window. So what this does for me is it allows me to look for symmetry in the brain very easily. And I want to also point out here, I'm here in the high uh, cortex here, you can note that there's a distinction here between the gray matter right on the periphery of this gyrus and the white matter which is seen here. And what, importantly what happens in the early aspect of a or early time of a ischemic stroke is you're going to see loss of that gray-white distinction. And basically what I'm looking for when I'm looking for stroke is I'm looking for focal hypo attenuation, decreased attenuation of a part of the brain. Uh, and basically I'm looking for asymmetry. Uh, it's usually a unilateral process. One side will be hypo attenuating, dark, with loss of the gray-white distinction, and the other side will be normal appearing. So zooming out helps me to see that. And I basically do the same thing as I do looking for hemorrhage, kind of split up the brain anterior and posterior halves. So I'll look anteriorly, looking for anything asymmetric or any blunting of the gray-white distinction. I do the same thing posteriorly. I'll make sure to compare the temporal lobes because they're a little bit further apart. And I look at the cerebellum as well. Now, noticing that the cerebellum and the brainstem are a little limited evaluation due to streak artifacts from all this dense bone that's here. So that's just something to either note in your uh, report or just also to just be aware that you might miss a subtle infarct in the cerebellum or brainstem. Also want to make sure you look at the deep brain nuclei. You can see here this internal capsule cutting nicely in between the basal ganglia here, the caudate lentiform nucleus. This is the thalamus, which some people don't uh, put in the basal ganglia, but that's the thalamus. I want to make sure that distinction is maintained on both sides. Sometimes you might just see a subtle blunting of the caudate as evidence for infarct. Definitely want to look at the insular cortex, which you can see right here. You can see this cortex, which is medial to the temporal lobe. And that's one of the earliest uh, cortical regions that's affected by ischemia. So I want to look to make sure that the gray-white distinction is maintained both sides there. Another good sign to look for for infarct is looking for the hyperdense vessel sign. So I come down here to the supercellular cistern where I can see the MCAs here and the uh, MCA cisterns. And I want to look at the MCA. And even though it's a non-contrast study, I want to evaluate the density. It should be pretty symmetric on both sides. If one side is more dense than the other, I might have a hyperdense vessel sign, which is very specific evidence for acute infarct, acute ischemic stroke. I can have the same thing in the basal artery here. And even though the ACAs are not really well seen because they're smaller caliber vessels, I could theoretically have a similar thing in the ACA, uh, anterior uh, cerebral arteries as well. Uh, it's important to note that about 60 to 70 percent of infarcts are in the MCA. So I definitely want to look there first or just make a good note of that. Okay, so let's go through some cases so we can demonstrate some of these findings. So this is a patient in about his 50s that came in with acute onset of right-sided symptoms and they're concerned for acute infarct. So the first thing I did was I excluded hemorrhage. Then I started looking for evidence for infarct and since the patient's symptoms are on the right, I'm going to be looking harder on the left, right? So here I have the patient, non-contrast CT, uh, have a narrow window, I have a kind of a small uh, size of the brain that I'm looking at. And as I'm scrolling up, I'm noticing kind of some asymmetry here. And definitely at this level, I, mean, I can see the internal capsule kind of cutting through here nicely on the right. It's all kind of blunted here on the left with kind of a lot of hypo attenuation here. Then I'm looking at my insula. I'm noticing that for, for definitely this left insula is asymmetric. It's definitely more blunted and dark here. And the tissue around here is just kind of darker in general. So these findings are very suspicious for an acute infarct. And as I, as I keep coming up here, you can just kind of notice there's some subtle blunting on the gray-white distinction where it appears to be preserved there, but it's kind of blunted here on the left. So uh, definitely I was concerned for, and you can definitely see on this image, very asymmetric, a lot darker and more hypodense with blunting of the gray-white distinctions here on the left. This was concerning for a left uh, MCA infarct. Now, if you don't believe me, I'll show you the follow-up studies. Okay, this was a follow-up study performed 24 hours after that initial CT, again, non-contrast CT, uh, axial plane. This is, again, a 2.5 millimeter slice thickness. So I'm scrolling up, you can see now a very well-defined 
well-defined hypoattenuation. It's in the left brain. seems to be affecting the left basal ganglia. It's in the frontal and parietal lobes. And as I come down, it's also affecting kind of the peripheral uh, inferior left temporal lobe. So basically, this is the distribution of the left MCA, uh, left middle cerebral artery. And what happens is as that brain loses its blood supply, it loses the ability to maintain its uh, cell walls, and the cells become edematous, and basically you get this low attenuation uh, confluent edema. So this is a confirmed. This is a left MCA infarct. And we were able to pick it up slightly earlier on the, on the initial study. Okay, so here's another patient. She had acute onset of uh, right-sided weakness. So again, I'm looking all over, but I'm also looking on the left. I came down to the supercellular cistern to look at her vessels. I was following out her MCAs here, and I noticed on the left that right at the bifurcation, it got a little dense there, and I can see the rest of the vessel here. It doesn't look quite as dense, and if I'm looking at the right here, I'm not seeing as much density in the right MCA. So this looks suspicious to us, so we called it. I ended up doing a follow-up CT angio on the patient, which I have right here. So this is a study where we inject contrast into the vasculature so we can assess for their patency of the vessels. And it's a little subtle, but you can notice here that right in that same region, there's asymmetry and there's less opacification of vessels. And definitely if you look here, you can see that there's no vessels over here and there's still vessels on the right. So this, was, and you can definitely see some asymmetry here. These vessels are opacifying here, these branches of the MCA. But they're, not, they're not opacifying over here. So basically, this was compatible with the left MCA infarct, acute stroke, and the patient went on to have some treatment. So basic things to keep in mind is uh, looking for focal hypotenuation. Make sure you check the insular cortex and definitely look for the hyperdense vessel sign, namely the MCA, as that's the most commonly involved vessel. Thank you for watching.